Don't Bother Me was the first composition that George brought into the studio for the Beatles to record. I believe that they wanted to make a track that was as exciting as the rest of what they were recording for with the Beatles, and this is why they recorded all that extra percussion. Paul's playing the woodblock, Ringo's playing the Arabian bongo, John's playing the tambourine, and George is doing a double track to his lead vocal. Previously on I Saw Her Standing There, the four of them got around a microphone to do hand claps, and there are a few occasional harmonica and piano overdubs on Please Please Me, but Don't Bother Me is the first time each Beatle is being given an additional role on a song. So the Beatles are taking their production skills one step further in the process of trying to make George's song a little bit better for the album. Initial attempts were made to record Don't Bother Me during the September 11th, 1963 sessions, where they also recorded attempts of I Wanna Be Your Man, Little Child, and they completed All I've Gotta Do and Not A Second Time. Don't Bother Me would be attempted but not finished until the next day on September 12th, where they recorded their remake of Hold Me Tight, finishing Don't Bother Me and Little Child, and once again attempting I Wanna Be Your Man, but not finishing it. Also earlier this day, they recorded messages to Australia. Don't Bother Me's second attempt starts on take 10 for organizational reasons, even though the previous day's takes didn't make it to take nine. Takes 10 through 13 would be the live band performing together, and takes 14 through 19 would be the percussion overdub, with George doing his lead vocal at the same time. The final version is take 15, dubbed onto 13. As some of you may know, this is one of the first times where the Beatles tried to use a guitar pedal called the Maestro Fuzz Tone. First George tries to use it on She Loves You, and then John again tries to use it for Don't Bother Me. They ultimately couldn't use it because George Martin was dissatisfied with the distorted tone it created. The pedal wouldn't be used again until 1965 on Think For Yourself. They ended up using tremolo, which is built into the amplifier and can be controlled by a footswitch. You can see here John is sitting at a chair so he can kick on and off the effect between the verse and the chorus sections. Our video had a few parts switched around. John's 325 is the loudest in both the verse and the chorus refrain. His tone is darker than George's guitar. You can hear George's guitar is a lot brighter during the solo section, and you can hear it peek through right before the bridge. Don't bother me. You can hear a minor third and a fifth, open G and open B, ring out right before I know I'll. On take 10, you can hear at this point John has the tremolo on while George is soloing. In the final version, John has the tremolo off and plays the verse pattern. Don't bother me, this is remake, we're calling it take 10. You know, and he has the tremolo effect on. So let's start going over some of these guitar parts. I'll start off showing you the John parts because he does more of the lead work and then we'll switch over to the George part, we'll learn that solo and how he's playing underneath the mix throughout most of the song. And then at the end of the video, I even wanted to talk about the Don't Bother Me demo from August of 1963, where he's got some different chord structures and we could talk about the songwriting process then too. Okay, starting right from the top with the John part. He plays an open D with an A on the bottom. Strumming all five notes. And then after the first initial strum, you want to focus just on strumming one or two strings. Just the, the D and the G string here. To an E minor. Then you have this rhythm. It's just an E minor, and then you go to the D string for that higher E. It's like boom, ba da ba bum bum. With an open strum on an upstroke in there. Right before that downbeat. And you can get a little bit of the G on that first E. Right there. Probably not on that upstroke though. And then on to the verse. So right here is already where he's turning off the tremolo. Now it's just a clean M. And he goes up to the... Just like that. Let me play it again. And it starts with all these... 
They're basically open fifth chords. You can play the major note or the minor note. John has his finger on the major note, but he's not really plucking it. You can hear it kind of come in and out. He's not aggressively playing a major note. No. It doesn't have that sound. It's more, it's all focused on the, that melody. And he's just incidentally getting a little bit of that major in there. So for this part, you're playing root to root to the flat seven. So the first time, da -da, and then da -da, the second time. So that third one, it's the same as the, the A. But this E is all upstrokes. So you have two high root notes and then flat seven, fifth. Like that. And you might want to get your first finger ready for this B chord as it's coming up. Switch right here, I'm on my middle finger and then I switch to first finger and then slide it up. kick on. I'm going to go for a quick close-up of this John part. I'll try to play just one finger so you can tell what note I'm on. probably playing with his pinky on the major third right here so you have another verse and chorus the exact same way of playing so I'll move on to the bridge which is tremolo off again. into the outro, which is just this E minor to A phrase. John's playing the th like, like Neil said in his video, they don't know when they're anticipating and when they're not, so. So the most accurate way to play it would be to not know it either. Right, so the George part. I think he's turning down his volume for the beginning and he's just playing kind of all the same things that John is playing but he, you know he's singing and playing since she's been gone I don't want no one to talk to me so go away leave me alone don't bother me so George is just comping the chords underneath he's trying to stay under the mix he's not laying too much on top you can hardly hear him until the parts, like I said, after choruses and the verses, you can kind of hear little peaks of his brighter guitar peeking through underneath that dark John guitar. So just moving straight on to the solo, because George is just playing the chords underneath and singing along. He's not really doing too much until the solo. So go away, leave me alone, don't bother me.
right there in that break is where you could turn back down the volume and continue playing underneath the lead guitar, which is John in this case. The solo section is based on this E minor pentatonic around the fifth and seventh fret of the neck. And it starts off with an E going up to a B and he slides into it, just like that. And it's possible that he's playing a low E on that first E as well, but it could also be John's guitar blending in. And then from the B, you want to hammer on from the flat seven to the major third. And after that, you slide up from this E and have a short note on this minor third. And then ba ba da 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 da. Just like that. And then the same phrase again. Double hammer on there. And then pulling off from here. And then sliding this kind of slowly so you get a rhythm to it. Like that da 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 da. And then hammering on the same pattern right below it. Moving on, you've got another bridge. George is doing all the same things, another verse, another chorus, all the same things until the end. Don't bother me. Don't bother me. George is just playing E minor and A, just like I said. So that about does it for the lead guitar and for the George guitar. So let's move on to the demo of the song, which I think is really cool. The first time you get to hear George writing a song. So I'm just going to show you all the parts I find interesting. And it starts off with this cool cadence that ends up in B major. He whistles it. I can't whistle, so I'm just going to sing it. You can kind of hear how that's Don't Bother Me related. But it almost sounds like his tonality is ending up or his tonic is ending up in B instead of E minor. Yeah, you never really get a, a home reference key for this song. It's kind of meant to be ambiguous. The next part he records resembles the bridge, or the second half of the bridge, starting with the B minor. out yet, but he's got something in his head and he, he's just recording ideas for, at this point. Right after he stops, it sounds like he's trying to go into the verse. Da, 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 da. And then he goes back to maybe some parts that he was working on before he started recording. Because it sounds like ideas he already has. It doesn't sound like improv necessarily. Like, uh... It kind of sounds like what he does at the end of the song, or what they end up going with with the, the coda. Maybe with the chords turn around. Don't bother me. Don't bother me. Yeah. Similar ideas. And then he plays. like the Dear Prudence thing. That's scrapped from the final. And you can hear 
hear him change that cadence right there instead of going straight from G to the E minor, going to a C instead. He knows he kind of likes that. They only go for me. That going from the C to the E minor instead of going to the G to the E minor. But then he also realizes that he doesn't like going from the G to the C before the E minor, so he has to change that. You can hear him play it a couple times and he's, he, he doesn't seem to like what he's hearing going from G to C in this progression. You can even hear once George tries to play the riff again from the beginning. He stops right there and lets himself reset. And then he resumes recording from the C to the E minor again. Then after seemingly getting stuck at that point, George starts noodling around with some Buddy Holly related things and some harmonics and I'll show you a few of those licks right now. Starting with the harmonics. skip the G string up to the E string skip the G string D and A string and then ending with the D string on fret 12 and then George goes into this D major lick doesn't really go anywhere Pretty similar to Blackbird in a way, it's playing you know contrapuntal melody lines like that. And then he does some stuff that's kind of like Buddy Holly up on the major A thing. It's similar to Crying, Waiting, Hoping. And this is. And then he just ends this recording with a little flat six cadence thing. I'm kind of similar to Till the You. And that's mostly what he does in this demo here. So after this demo recording, George must have penned down some lyrics and gotten the chords a little bit more figured out before presenting it to the rest of the group on September 11th and 12th when they recorded the song. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis of Don't Bother Me. Let me know what you want to hear in the comments, and I'll see you next time.